Hello everyone. My name is Alan Shura and I followed the uh, free energy movement for the last six years. This is my first project, the Gerard Morin replication, July 2nd, 2015. I have uh, worked in industry. I've uh, been a boiler maker for 20 years, but had to leave about six years ago. Uh, WCB related, and I'm also a computer programmer. Program for 30 years. I have a certificate in C sharp from Nate in C sharp programming. I haven't used it I, uh, too much. I've uh, mainly programmed in GFA Basic, and the last big program would be uh, DBF Neotrek DBF Database Express that was on CNET. Now, First we'll talk about setup and construction. It's an 18 volt nickel cadmium battery. Here's an engine. It's called, it's a DC engine called, called the uh, AX 24007 by Axial.com T55. It's, it's for uh, scaled down model trucks. So it's got quite a bit of torque. I don't think quite as much RPM as the little high-speed motors that some are using. I haven't tried this one on it yet, but it's up to 24,000 RPM, 12 to 24 volt, no specs on this one. But I think it's got quite a bit of torque, more torque than the high-speed, so I would estimate less than 5,000 maybe three to five thousand but that's just a guess and the uh, washer pump is uh, um, Italian called an call I believe uh, there's a duty cycle uh, I don't know if you can see that but there's a uh, there's a there's there's an IC in there it gives it a duty cycle it says uh, 10 minutes on 50 off but it hasn't affected this as far as I know and you have to tie these down quite a bit I had quite a bit of vibration um, when I first took out this magnet I uh, broke it I, and now the chip is out but we're pretty stable there but there's still friction and of course, natural resistance. This is got a, a kind of a resistance to this magnet. Okay. Um, the reason for doing the video is that um, there's a lot of questions about this uh, system here. I see it uh, sort of as like two different systems because the circuit's not connected you've got the system running from the battery to the motor and all the energy from the battery is on the circuit to the motor the second system is the uh, is the is the generator and the output from the generator um, operates everything outside of the the prime mover area prime mover being whatever you use to turn it the battery so the question is um, are we uh, gaining uh, real efficiency or as they say, over unity efficiency would be 100%, would be unity. 
Um, I'd like as much as anybody to um, show that there is, uh, but we know that this, this is just the start of the system. The transformer has to be tested too when it's added to the system to bring up the voltage very high. But um, uh, I'll turn it on now. And we'll try to get some more readings here. It's hard to jump around with, uh, everywhere with just uh, one multimeter. So bear with me, please. Okay, there it is. It's our uh, 19.6 volt. Turn it on. 17.6. to switch to AC. Point nine or ninety one volts. That's under a load. Eric, just hang on here. Switch into the high range, it's over 200 volts. <laughs> okay, there you have it, it was 222 volts without a load. So that's uh, that's quite a difference from from uh, 90 volts uh, up to 222, and you saw that there was 19.6. Uh, but as soon as the load is put on there, it dropped to 17.6. And uh, when it's running, the the light is uh, quite bright, quite bright. It's a 60 watt incandescent. But I'm going to add the other another light to it. And take the take another reading, and then I'll go back into uh, my thoughts and discussions. Unscrew that so you can see what's going on. Actually, it's coming down a bit now with the battery, but... See, they both dim to a faint glow there. So this is obviously the full load output. With a full load output, it just shows 25 volts. 
So you saw with no load, we're up in the 225 range. My own previous measurements was that it generally when it's under full power, 19 volts, it settles to 225, but it's been as high as 232. Um, it seems to handle 60 watt quite well, but it dims with the 260 watts, which would be 120 watt. So my estimate is, you know, that it could get up to about 75 watts. Now the amperage, my own reading, uh, when I took, uh, taken before, there's quite a bit of vibration there, so it's, and this is not the, the, uh, the best for amperage being such a cheap um, multimeter, but I bounced around from 0.1 and sometimes up to 0.5 of an amp. Um, so I went to an electrician to measure the amperage. It was at 17.8 uh, volts and 6.2 amp. And under a full load of 160 watt light bulb, a little later, so it actually might have been a little bit lower with the battery running down, that's the, um, the variable. And he recorded 0.44 amp with uh, 88 volt. So you can see that there's very high amperage coming out of here when the motor is on. But there's very low amperage coming out of here, but a higher voltage. So what we're trying to find out what this all means is is how much power are we actually getting which is be expressed in watts so by that um, measurement um, from the electrician the, the watts coming out of here would be 105 the watts um, on the light bulb which could have run down a little bit by the time he measured it was um, uh, 38 watts so that's not over unity. We need um, 105, 105 for 100% 100 efficiency for the entire system. We have losses in the friction here, or in, particularly early on. There's not a not a lot of friction now here, but uh, but there's still friction. There's still vibration, uh, and uh, that should be accounted for too. So basically I wanted to know if there's um, over unity, if it could be looped back to power itself. Well, not at this speed, it doesn't mean that uh, the idea won't work. But um, if it was, a, say, a high speed motor, uh, Rust Grease recorded much lower amperage. Um, and the only difference I can see is the engine. His uh, amperage was point. 0.22 or 0.277 or so compared to this which can seems to be putting out close to half an amp at, out of here but the rotation much slower now about the batteries this is this is the thing this is a tool battery it's not coming out of your wall socket so it's always running down so well, I think what I want to do is maybe put um, a couple of volt meters and amp meters and have them set in so that you can see what's going on simultaneously. So um, I more than anyone want to see the um, free energy movement uh, succeed and um, Girard is going into other things. Uh, people are building add-ons here. I don't expect um, um, any big output till I get some kind of a transformer, a microwave or a neon transformer, but I'm not up to quite, as you can see, I haven't got to that yet. This is the f first video. But uh, the interesting thing is, is, is you saw how the lights dimmed uh, under the full load. Well, if we put an incandescent bulb into here, it will uh, 
dim it will show a dim light so as you can say as you can see you can switch between AC and DC with an incandescent bulb because it's it's primarily only a resistance um, circuit so it can go back and forth between AC and DC but with this particular bulb it was very dim it didn't draw off the battery so that means it's not drawing very many amps but if you just on the battery the motor the motor pulls amps so that's a question I don't have the answer right away and I don't know if you'll find it right away from a search but why does a motor pull the very high amperage and the light not pull the high amperage yet when you put it on this end the alternating current the, the, the bulb will try to take it to the limit as for the other kinds of bulbs there uh, that Gerard was first asking some questions some months ago about uh, well the the, uh, the phosphorescent uh, bulbs well they get excited when they come near a wire so it's not directly related to the 100 percent to the, the fact that there's contacts on the end just like with the ammeter the electrician had he doesn't make contact with the wire he just goes around it and picks up the EMF and fluorescent bulbs are able to do that when when the molecules get get uh, ionized or excited with um, electricity so I guess it's a little uh, uh, disheartening not to see that it's at slightly over unity though the grease ones was showing that at a higher speed it could maybe cross the over but there's been some talk about the uh, looping back we can't loop back without losses because the DC motor will not run off of this because the DC motor is two cycle AC so that means to loop it back the output from here the two cycle AC has to be rectified back to a uh, DC before it goes in so you need a power supply like a computer power supply I was thinking the other day or or uh, you know an expensive power supply that uh, where you where you might want to control the feedback but uh, the two types of power are not compatible with the prime mover system and there'll be losses in there losses in in uh, heat and the fan possibly depending on what type of uh, rectifier you're using so that's something to bear in mind so I uh, I guess I'll have to move on to the next stage but uh, but uh, those are those are my thoughts and uh, I would have liked to conclude that there's over unity just with this starter bit but there is not <laughs> I cannot conclude that with this particular setup that I have here but I seem to get a lot of power out of 18 volt battery uh, compared to the first one where um, Gerard Morin was uh, had 48 volts I believe and the only difference I can see is the motor. Well, until later, thanks everybody.